Uber and Lyft stock continues to climb. I believe Lyft is up 6% and Lyft was really in the tank. What up, folks? Once again, it's your boy Tim with another ride sharing video. The purpose of this is to talk about the fact that the stock prices for both Uber and Lyft have increased since Prop 22 coming out of California has been defeated. Now, it is expected to go to the Supreme Court, so you haven't heard the last of Prop 22, but I wanted to bring this to you because we talked about in New York how they won for Uber and Lyft drivers, won a pay raise, and they have won a few other provisions that us rideshare drivers want, but how they're losing in California because they essentially are fighting for something that most drivers do not want. And that is fighting for the right for us drivers to become employees. While most drivers want more out of their ride-sharing companies, predominantly Uber and Lyft, they don't want it as employees. They want it to, while remaining as an independent contractor. Well, on comes Minnesota. The state of Minnesota is currently pushing to have the ride-sharing companies cover driver's expense, talking about fuel, talking about vehicle maintenance, and impose a minimum wage. Now, this is kind of in the middle of what New York and California are, uh, are attempting to do, or whereas New York has succeeded and right now California has failed, what Minnesota is doing is kind of in the middle but in my humble opinion, it's closer to what they're doing in California. And because of that, that is why I believe what they're proposing in Minnesota ultimately will fail as well. Meaning, we're talking about trying to get the rideshare companies to cover the fuel and maintenance costs of the vehicles. If they do that, they're going to want something in return, which is essentially treating us like employees. You think if Uber or Lyft has to suddenly pay off, pay for all of the fuel that you're spending, pay for your oil changes, your brakes, your insurance, and all of this that Minnesota is pursuing, well, they're going to want something in return. I mean, obviously, that by far, particularly fuel, is our largest expense. So if the ride-sharing companies have to cover that, they're going to want something in return because that's going to cost them a small fortune. So I believe what Minnesota is pushing is probably attempting to cross a bridge too far. Let me know in the comments, particularly my veteran drivers. I mean, obviously we would all love if they would cover these expenses, but there will be repercussions that come with it. There are pros and cons to any legislation that comes down the pipe. And when you're talking about making them pay for something that's going to cost this much, what are they going to ask us for? So you guys let me know. Would you be in favor of what Minnesota is proposing? Just like in my previous video where I told you California trying to have us listed as independent or better yet as employees. Once again, it is a bridge too far. I've done videos in the past where I have asked you folks, would you prefer to be an independent contractor or an employee? Would you prefer to be an employee if you could get the rights and provisions that most employees get? And most folks stated no, because of the cons that come along with becoming an employee, such as specified shifts, specified lunches and breaks. Now, all of a sudden, you're dealing with bean counters and management that you don't have to currently deal with as a rideshare driver. So, most of the folks that responded in kind to my commentary stated that they would not want to be an employee, even if it came along with some of the benefits like workers' comp and unemployment insurance. Many folks suggested, no, I don't want to be an employee. The whole reason I became a rideshare driver is because I acquired flexibility and freedom to do what I want, when I want, how I want as a rideshare driver. So I do believe what they're doing in Minnesota is probably going to go the way of uh, what happened in California. Just to close the video up, I'm going to say what I say in most videos. The way to do this is to push for transparency, push against the wrongful deactivations and make them explain their algorithms. You can do all of that and maintain your status as an independent contractor. Stay away from the attempt to become employees for the reasons I mentioned. Also, as an employee, 
you're now going to have limited amount of drivers. I understand many of us that drive, one of our key complaints, oversaturation in many markets. Well, if they list us as employees, just like with any business, they're going to limit the amount of people that can do it. And you now give them the right to lay off and things like that, you know, as they please. Not to say they're not doing it already with the wrongful deactivations, but you're starting to enter the corporate world. And yeah, there are some benefits that come to being an employee, but there are negatives. But let me know in the comments. Once again, do you believe what they're doing in Minnesota, trying to get the ride share companies to pay for vehicle expenses, maintenance, fuel, and insurance also giving us a flat minimum wage. Do you believe that will fail or succeed? Let your boy know in the comments. Once again, it's your boy, Tim. Subscribe to the damn channel. You know what I always say. And I'll see you in the next video.